Welcome to this special worship service. We are celebrating the Holy Day of Pentecost. On this day, we remember how the promised presence of the Holy Spirit was experienced by many in a transforming way. We consider this miraculous event to be the birthday of the Christian Church. My name is Hilary Chrisley, and I am the pastor of Glendora United Methodist Church, and together with Reverend Jim Brooking of West Covina United Methodist Church, we welcome you to this shared time of worship, fellowship, challenge, and joy. The presence of the Spirit is still working in and through our lives as we belong with one another in the body of Christ. So may our time together in worship draw us closer in love with our neighbor and closer to a loving God, a merciful Christ, and a powerful Holy Spirit. Please join me in the call to worship. The day of Pentecost is here. God's children have gathered in this place. We are, we are transformed, transformed into one body by God's Spirit joining, joining with, with ours. ours. Come, Spirit of Adoption, and open our hearts to our sisters and brothers. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come, Spirit of Peace, and calm our trembling hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, breath of God, and inspire your people. Come, Holy Spirit. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Let 
Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, La lecture des Écritures d'aujourd'hui, nous entendons les événements incroyables de la première Pentecôte de l'Église chrétienne. Notre lecture provient des Actes des Apôtres, chapitre 2, versets 1 à 24. Ahora bien, mientras estaba en progreso en el día de la fiesta del Pentecostés, todos se hallaban juntos en el mismo lugar. Y de repente ocurrió desde el cielo un ruido exactamente como el de una brisa impetuosa y fuerte, y llenó toda la casa de la cual estaban sentados. Y Kulikua na Wayahudi waleokoka dini kutoka kwa kila taifa chini ya mwingo wanaoshi Yerusalemu. Walipo sikia sauti hii, umati wa watu ulikasanyika. Wali hesabiwa kwa sababu kila mtu aliwasikia wakiongea katika lugha sao za asili. Tapa kama laha at pagtataka ay kanilang nasabi, hindi ba taga-genelaya silang lahat? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism? Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. De stod där förvånade och häpna. Vad kan det här betyda? Frågade de sig. Men andra i folksgården hanade de. De är berusade. Det är ju självklart, sa de. När du har kelleva att pita med kau apostol och koe, och le har pita kikakai. Kwenye kalanga leo lahi mumahina, e kainga, kwa kimotoko tawape au kunofo yu seusalema, mufanongo lele imai kabri atu. Oku hala hao mupehe, oku kona situnga matu ani, heko hiva pongpongi peenia. Sondern dies ist es, was durch den Propheten Joel gesagt ist, und es wird geschehen in den letzten Tagen, spricht Gott dass ich von meinen Geistig ausgesen werde auf alles Fleisch und ihre Söhne und ihre Tochter werden wie sagen und ihre Jünglingen werden Gesichter sehen und ihre Erstelten werden Tramsichter haben.
از نیروی خرد ایزدی و نیکندیشی و راستی برخوردار باشند در انتخاب راه نیک کامیاب گردند و به پاداش آن در دو جهان بهره نیک یابند ایبا تولو اسر سنس وانشی کیپور انوگوچی ارودان انجه تامان کم دقتز اسر ایداجی از اما مرما کم دقتز اسر ایدانجی سریسا کیبوبا تدنون جدیر Enyi wa Israeli wenzangu, sikili zeni maneno haya, Yesu nazareti alikuwa mtu ambaye sifa zake, mungu alifisha kwa kisia Let us pray. Spirit of God, flickering over our hearts, illuminating our faces, inspiring our thoughts, give us now, we pray, words of joy and praise. Spirit of God, filling our hearts with hope, steadying our nerves with peace, comforting our lives with love. Give us now, we pray, words of joy and praise. Spirit of God, come to us now, surging through the darkness of our lives, sweeping over our weariness, so that in this time of Pentecost, the sparkling light of faith, the rushing wind of hope, and the joyful sound of praise may echo round the world, may echo in the church, and find their response in us. We pray for an end to the hostilities in the Middle East. The loss of innocent life accomplishes nothing. Remind us that we are all your children, regardless of ethnic origin or religious belief. Palestinians, like all people, deserve a safe homeland. Lord, we pray for our church, our conference, and our bishop. We seek your guidance through these troubling times. We are surrounded by violence and aimed at our black and Asian communities. Some of that violence comes from those sworn to protect and serve. Remind us once again, God, that you have no favorites. We are all your beloved children who Christ died for. Remind us that we cannot love you while we have disdain or hatred for another. Perfect your love within us that we might be worthy to be called your children. Be with your children who are in need this day. We lift up those in our congregations who are mourning the loss of a loved one, those who are dealing with illness and disease, those in our community who are facing hunger and homelessness. To all of these grant your peace and equip us to be your hands and feet to bring about healing and comfort that others might know your love for them. Spirit of God, give us now, we pray, words of joy and praise. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The offerings we made in these past weeks empowered ministry within our congregations and in response to the needs of our communities. You have also helped to support the work of ministries beyond the local church that reach people who are in desperate need to feel the touch of God's love and reconciliation. With the Holy Spirit's guidance, we are seeking innovative ways to energize our ministries and grow in our outreach in our communities and the world. These ministries happen thanks to the generous support of folks like you. I invite you once again to give generously through West Covina United Methodist Church and Glendora United Methodist Church as we worship God through the sharing of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Are you a delegate too? Where are you from? Cappadocia? Cappadocia, where is that exactly? I never was any good with geography. I, I should have paid more attention in, in school. Uh, how long have you been at the convention? Oh, you just got here? Oh, too bad. The most amazing thing just happened. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit ago, me, me too. Just unpacked my stuff at the hotel and went to registration. They were handing out these great maps, so I thought I'd do a little sightseeing before the delegate session. As I was passing one of the designated prayer sites, I, I heard this sound like, oh, I, I don't know, a, a giant wind or something. I looked around in case there was a storm coming on, Forgot my umbrella, wouldn't you know? But, but no clouds, no lightning, a beautiful day, in fact. And that startling sound was coming from the prayer room all by itself. That seemed pretty weird to me. I mean, I know that different countries have different prayer traditions, but I never heard of a prayer meeting turning into a storm. But there was more. It reminded me kind of like a a light show, only it was broad daylight and you could still see it, which never happens, at least not where I come from. There we always wait for dark to start the fireworks. And I was thinking about putting on sunglasses and checking it out when everyone in the prayer room started talking in loud voices. And it sounded like gibberish at first, but then, I began to pick out someone speaking in my language. What are the odds of that? I mean, I know there are other Medes here, but usually when someone translates, they take turns with the main speaker, you know, and, and usually the conference only provides translation into Greek and Latin. And, and here's the thing. The other people who were standing around were obviously also hearing their mother tongue. We all sort of looked at each other and shrugged our shoulders. And I thought to myself, man, oh man, this is going to be some rocking conference. Start out like this and who knows where it will go. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I, for, I forgot to mention that. They were talking about God's great acts in our history. I mean, I mean us Jews. And now that God had done a new thing, sent the Messiah, Jesus, who had been killed by the Romans, but raised up alive. Well, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Have, have you ever heard of such a thing? Oh, then one of the people who was listening started to laugh. Just ignore him, he said. Can't you tell they're drunk? But then a guy came out of the room to clear things up. Are you kidding, he said. It's only 9 a.m. Who starts drinking that early in the morning? No, what you're hearing is what the prophet Joel predicted. In the last days, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I gotta tell you, I, I came expecting something, but this is way beyond what I imagined. The, the Holy Spirit knows our differences and has been moving in and through them. We aren't drawn together today because we think and act and speak the same. We're becoming one together because of what Jesus Christ did for us. It's like all the delegates, all of us here, are part of a new group, a new body of believers in this Jesus. And we, from all over, are each now part of the whole thing, like like an ecclesia, you know, a church, a universal church. No matter our language or our hometown, we'll be Christ's church together, actually being filled with God's own spirit. Wow, this is going to be amazing. change. When I was young, the church was respectable, a predictable, safe haven in a dangerous world. I grew up in the 1950s and 60s, a time that we remember as wonderfully uncomplicated, a leave it to beaver kind of world, a happy days kind of world. But it wasn't quite that simple. We had survived World War II and the Korean War, only to find ourselves engaged in the Cold War. We were tra training children to duck and cover, to duck under their desks and cover in the event of an atomic attack. I remember we had air raid drills 
People were building bomb shelters in their backyards and outfitting them with food for their families and pistols to ward off their neighbors. So, the 50s were not as perfect as you might imagine. Truth is, the good old days never were. And we needed a place to feel safe. And we felt safe in church. Businessmen, and they were mostly men in those days, sometimes joined a church as a way to network, to meet potential clients. Church was not only safe, but it could help you to get ahead. Church was safe and genteel. But the church hasn't always been safe and genteel, and it still isn't for some. Its beginnings were certainly not safe and genteel. Like most, most births, the church birth was a bloody mess. The church has its roots in the bloody ground beneath the cross. We celebrate the church's birthday on Pentecost today. The first Christian Pentecost was quite an uproar. The disciples had gathered in Jerusalem for Pentecost. Jews came to Jerusalem from all over to celebrate Pentecost. As many as 180,000 pilgrims. Can you imagine 180,000 visitors in West Covina or Glendora? It would be utter chaos. People everywhere. I think Jerusalem must have been like that. People everywhere. People rubbing elbows and jostling each other. Looking for a place to eat. Looking for a place to sleep. Looking for old friends. Enjoying a happening place. Of course, there were pretty predict predictable events in Jerusalem at the time of Pentecost. And for that matter, things are pretty predictable in our own communities as well. But just imagine how it must have been in Jerusalem. There was no need for police. After all, these were religious pilgrims. They had come to worship God. They weren't going to do anything bad. For many of them, it was the only time that they would ever see the temple. And they were certainly in awe. The temple was where God lived, you know. Jews believed that God lived in the Holy of Holies at the center of the temple. The temple set high on a mountain, and you could see it from everywhere. These pilgrims had come from far and near to worship God at the temple. It was the experience of a lifetime. But then something totally unexpected happened. They heard a great noise, a deafening roar, like a jet plane, like a tornado. They had heard stories about Pentecost all their lives, but nobody had ever mentioned this noise. What in the world? And then they saw a group of disciples gathered together, Jesus' disciples. We think that there was about 120 of them. And these disciples were on fire. Now, I'm not talking about being on fire for Jesus. I'm talking about flames. All of these disciples were on fire. 120 Christians with their hair on fire. And that's not what happened to me, by the way. But the fire didn't consume them. Does that remind you of anything? It surely reminded the people at that first Christian Pentecost of Moses and the burning bush. The bush that burned, but was not consumed by the fire. God used that bush to get Moses' attention. And now God was using fire 
to get the crowd's attention. And then those disciples started preaching. Luke says, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The results should have been total confusion, but it wasn't. Everyone understood that each person heard in his or her own language. It must have been something. 120 preachers, hair on fire, preaching in every language. And everyone understood every word. People had come from everywhere. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya and Mesopotamia, the Isle of Crete, everywhere. Each person heard the preaching in his or her own language. Now to really appreciate how that felt, you need to have experienced being overseas without a guard and a place where no one speaks your language. How would you find a restaurant, a hotel, or a bathroom? Now, I usually use a lot of hand gestures, like charades. With a little luck, you get what you need. But now and then, someone will start speaking in English. And I feel like leaping for joy in a strange place. It's so nice to hear your own language spoken. That is, of course, unless your brother is using foul words. And someone says to you, oh, I hear you speak English. But that's another story. So the disciples got the crowd's attention. Everyone was listening. Then Peter got up to preach. What kind of sermon did he preach? Did he tell them that they were good people? No. Did he tell them that Jesus was going to make everything easy for them? No. Peter told them that they had killed the Messiah. It was no gentle sermon. Luke tells us, that the people were cut to the heart. They wanted to know what they could do. Peter told them to repent and be baptized. And 3,000 people were baptized that day. They received the Holy Spirit. They became new people. That didn't make life easier for them. It just aligned them with God's plan for their lives. These 3,000 people returned to their homes and told others about Jesus. The church began to spread at Pentecost, and it was the beginning of something big, the birth of the church, the salvation of the world, and these people filled with the Spirit played an important part. That's what happens when we become Christians, when the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our lives, when we align our lives with God's will. It isn't that life gets easy, but that important things begin to happen. We become a part of something big, not something easy, but something big. As we near the end of restrictions caused by the pandemic, and we look forward once again to worshiping in our sanctuaries, may the Holy Spirit take up residence in our lives, that we too may do big things to further God's church in our respective communities. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I'm laying down my life, I'm giving up control, I'm never looking back, I surrender all, I'm living for your glory on the earth. This passion in my heart, this stirring in my soul, to see the nations bow, for all the world to know, I'm living for your glory on the earth. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me, light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. For every knee to bow down, for every heart to believe, for every voice to cry out, burn like a fire in me for every tongue to confess you alone are the king you are the hope of the earth burn like a fire in me for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me light a flame in my soul for every eye to see for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me i'm laying down my life I'm giving up control, I'm never looking back, I surrender all, I'm living for your glory on the earth. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was given to the church in a new way. In pouring the Holy Spirit on many peoples, God overcomes any divisions we create as people from every tongue, tribe, and nation are gathered into the unity of the body of Christ. Jesus stays with us in the Spirit, who renews our hearts moves us to faith, leads us in the truth, stands by us in our need, and makes our obedience fresh and vibrant. The Spirit propels God's people into worldwide mission. The Spirit impels young and old men and women to go next door and far away into science and art, media and marketplace, with the good news of God's grace. The Spirit goes before us and with us, convincing the world of our need for grace and pleading the cause of Christ. The Spirit's gifts are here to stay in rich variety, fitting responses to timely needs. We joyfully see each other as gifted members of the fellowship as we delight in the creative Spirit's work the Spirit gives more than enough to each believer for God's praise and our neighbor's welfare. Thanks be to God. Church, you are the church, we are the church together. 
our building. The church is not a steeple. The church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people. Kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Sometimes the church is marching, sometimes it's bravely burning. Sometimes it's riding, sometimes hiding, all the ways it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, they're singing and they're praying. There's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it's saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Receive now the benediction. The Holy Spirit work within us that we might become the body of Christ for the world, able to teach as Jesus taught, to care as Jesus cared, and to serve as Jesus served. Go forth to honor and glorify God in all that you say and all that you do. Amen.